Hey everyone, it's Jacob with Waterwell FAQ, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to size a submersible pump system for a water well. Uh, this video will be part one of two videos that we're going to do, and this video is going to focus on how to um, estimate your total dynamic head for your desired flow rate. Um, the easiest way to do that is with a simple to use worksheet that we've created that is available for free download on our website. So today we're going to start by going to our website at waterwellfaq.com. I also encourage you to check out our blog and other videos. Um, but for right now, let's just go to the download section. Click on downloads and you're going to see a couple of options. There is going to be two worksheets for a TDH or total dynamic head. Um, if you only know your estimated pumping level for your flow rate that you're trying to size for, use a simple sheet. If you know your static water level and your specific capacity of your well, which is the gallons per minute per foot of drawdown um, that it can produce, then use the advanced. But for this tutorial, we're going to use the simple sheet. We're going to click download. After it downloads, click on the spreadsheet. And once it opens, if you have this enable editing option up here, go ahead and click that. All right. So this uh, sheet is what we're going to use to calculate our total dynamic head. So first, let's go ahead and put in our project name. So we're just going to call this John Smith Water Well. Okay. And then we're going to put in today's date. And then we're going to put in our name for created by. Okay, so after we got that, this is where we're going to focus our design criteria. So we're going to assume we're sizing a pump system for a residential water well. And we are going to select our column pipe size first. Now this is going to change what options we have avail available to us for flow rate. So we got to make sure we pick a size that's suitable um, for our, our flow rate. So for this well, we're going to say it can make 16 gallons a minute, which inch and a quarter pipe is a good size for 16 gallons a minute. So we're going to leave it at inch and a quarter, but as you can see, you have multiple options available all the way up to eight inch. So we're just going to leave it at inch and a quarter column pipe size. For our flow rate, we're going to select 16 gallons per minute. And then for our column pipe length, this is going to be our set depth. So how deep are we setting it? So in this example, we're going to say 357 feet. Next, we're going to tell it if we need any pressure. So how much operating pressure do we want? So we're going to select uh, 60 PSI. It's a good number for, for their water well. So we're going to select, we want 60 PSI line pressure. Then it's going to ask, well, what's your pumping water level? And this is the, the depth at which your water level is at when you're pumping at 16 gallons a minute. So let's say we know that we're going to be about 300 feet below ground surface for a pumping water level at 16 gallons a minute. Next is our PVC pipeline size. This refers to any PVC plumbing you have above ground that goes from your well to wherever you're pumping water. So in our case, a house. So we're gonna leave it at inch and a quarter, but again, you've got a drop down here to select from. We'll leave it at inch and a quarter. And then we're gonna tell it how long is that distance from our well to our house. This could be a house, could be an irrigation system, a lake, wherever you're pumping water, how long of a distance is that? So let's say it's 100 feet. And then lastly, it wants to know, are there any surface elevation that it has to overcome, that your pump has to overcome in order to push water uh, from your well to the end point? So for this example, let's say our house is 10 feet higher in elevation than where our well is located. If it's flat ground and there's really no elevation change, just leave it at zero, or if it's downhill, leave it at zero. But if there is any difference in elevation, um, this is where you put that in. So now that we put that in, here is a breakdown of all of our head pressure in the system. As you can see, it's telling us 310 feet of vertical lift. That's 300 feet of pumping water level lift and uh, 10 feet of surface elevation. 26 feet of head from column pipe friction loss, 138.6 feet of head uh, from our 60 PSI because there's 2.31 feet of head per PSI, and then another 3.66 feet of head um, from uh, pipeline friction loss. That's the 100 feet of uh, inch and a quarter pipe that we're pushing through. So now that we have all of this calculated, we know that to produce 16 gallons a minute 
from a depth of 300 feet at 60 PSI through 100 feet of pipe to our house, it, it creates 478.32 feet of head. So the 478 and the 16 are going to be the two numbers we're going to use in our next video for sizing our pump because the flow rate and total head are the two numbers that we got to know. A couple little things I'll point out about this spreadsheet for your use in the future um, is that the green and the blue boxes are, are, are ones that you have to input information into. These down here, you don't do anything with. Um, the green boxes just means it has a drop down menu. Uh, blue just means you type in whatever number you want. Um, on the green boxes for column pipe size, once you change the size here, it changes what flow rates are available to you here. Okay. So if you don't see your exact flow rate, let's say you're after 38 gallons a minute, getting really specific, um, just round up or down to whichever uh, is closest. So in this case, I'd go to 40, but if I was 36 or even 37 gallons per minute, I'd go to 35. Um, but again, for our example here today, inch and a quarter pipe, 16 gallons a minute, we got 478 feet ahead. Um, the other thing is uh, the column pipe friction loss is based on new galvanized steel pipe. Um, and the last little pointer I want to I want to talk about on this spreadsheet, and I get asked this a lot, is what about friction loss through check valves, or T's, or elbows, or flow meters, things like that? Um, don't they make a difference? The answer is yes and no. No in residential applications where you're dealing with, with a relatively low flow rate, like 16 gallons a minute, as long as your, your column pipe size and your PVC pipe size is, is adequate for that flow rate um, and doesn't create excessive friction loss, if you just have a few elbows or a couple of check valves, they're really not going to add up to much additional head. And the few feet of additional head that they do create is not going to be enough to significantly impact our sizing or change our sizing. We have enough wiggle room in the sizing um, to where those really won't matter. Now, larger applications, if we're talking pumping hundreds of gallons a minute um, and we have maybe quite a few elbows, uh, you know, 90 degree elbows or check valves um, or flow meters, um, then yes, I, I probably would go in and use a, um, a friction loss chart for fittings and factor those in in some form or fashion um, to my total dynamic head calculations. But in general, for most residential and even you know light irrigation, agricultural uses, as long as your pipe is sized properly, the additional head pressure from elbows and fittings and things like that is negligible. So I usually don't worry about it. I don't get too far into the weeds on those things. So once you have all this done, um, you can save it and you can go to file, save as, rename it, uh, whatever you want to name it to your um, computer. Uh, and then you can go to file and uh, save as also and change the type to a uh, PDF. Uh, and uh, save, save this as a, as a PDF right there. Um, and that way you have it as a PDF as well. Um, but that's going to conclude our part one video uh, for calculating total the dynamic head uh, for sizing a submersible pump system. Uh, tune in to part two, which is coming very shortly, and we will take this information um, and use it to size a submersible pump online with um, a product selector uh, that will tell us what's our best pump options for this criteria. So thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, to our YouTube channel. Uh, click the bell uh, icon also to get updates when we upload new videos. And again, check out our website at waterwellfaq.com for other videos and blogs. And uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, video today and stay tuned.